Welcome to our next big adventure, Alaska. This will be the 49th state that Sonia and I have been to visiting since our marriage. So how did we plan our trip to Alaska? Well, I started honestly by Googling sites to see in Alaska and Canada as we drive through. And that's how we begun our, our idea for our journey. The neat thing about trips like this is you can decide what you want to go see that suits your needs and your interests. And uh, your trip does not have to be like everybody else's. For ours, we're not doing a lot of the different rides or the train rides or um, glacier tours or paid tours like that. Part of that is health issues. Uh, it's hard to be away from from uh, facilities for too long and food is a big concern of ours because of our our health issues but what we've decided is on our way up to Alaska uh, of course going through Canada what are some of the things we can do what are some of the sites we can see and as we come up we're staying further west we're gonna stop at Barkerville uh, as we come up and then we're going to take the Cassier Highway. We're going to go to Hyder and Stewart, uh, Stewart, BC, Hyder, Alaska. Uh, look at the uh, bears on the creek there. Uh, go up the Cassier all the way up to the Alcan Highway over to Skagway. Um, from Skagway, come on up, take the Toke uh, Junction and head south initially all the way to Glen Allen and Valdez. Uh, and then up through Palmer over to the Kenai Peninsula, on to Whittier, Seward, then from there up to Fairbanks, and then home over the Alcan Highway with stops at both uh, Jasper and Banff on the way back to our home state of Oregon. So that's our next journey. Also in prepping for the trip, we ordered Alaska and Canada West maps we like to have paper maps, and that's not just because there'll be lack of cell service in a lot of the places we go through up in Canada and Alaska, but we just, I guess we're just old fashioned. We like old analog typed up maps. Uh, you never have to worry about them downloading uh, or not downloading. They're always there. And uh, we've highlighted our trip on those maps and uh, we've broke down an itinerary as to where we're driving each day um, and yes we are winging this we are not making any camping reservations on our way up the other thing we did is we ordered the most recent up-to-date mile post and we've gone through and marked pages and uh, campgrounds and highlighted some of the different locations we're going to be uh, and on our itinerary we have page numbers listed on uh, per day where the maps are and where you would find information on the campgrounds we plan on staying. But we've done some other prepping too. Let's go take a look. Some of the other things we've done to prep for the trip is power. To try to save money on this trip we are trying to do a lot of boondocking or lower expensive state or uh, county or provincial parks that only are costing you know 15, 20, 25 dollars a night instead of full hookups that are running a lot more than that, $50, $75 or more a night. But we still want to be comfortable. So one of the things we're doing in a previous video, we talked about uh, removing the RV microwave because this generator wasn't capable of running it. So we're going to put the house microwave, which is smaller, and we've already tested it on this generator. So this Predator 2000 watt inverter generator will power that microwave, something we want to use. Uh, also, to help keep our battery bank charged when we're parked, is we uh, got a Renogy 200 watt uh, briefcase solar panel system, and we have tested it out at my brother's house and found it to be really good as well. So for power-wise, we should be covered uh, even when we're we're disconnected from the grid. Uh, between the battery bank, uh, the two Lion Energy UT1300 lithium batteries that have 105 amp hours a piece 
uh, to the solar panel to help keep those charged up. The 2000 watt inverter that's mounted in the trailer and the generator, we should be able to uh, handle whatever comes our way power wise. Another thing we've done to prep for the trip is maintenance and repairs on the trip. So I have a, a repair box and inside the repair box I have zip ties, Gorilla Tape, WD-40, um, extra screws, uh, parts that we might be able to use to fix things. And I also carry a full tool bag. Inside the tool bag I have uh, torquing wrenches and, and uh, three quarter inch drive uh, sockets for some of the bigger things so I can tighten and adjust my, my ball to hitch uh, nut. I can tighten and torque that down. I can torque all of the bolts on our hitch. Uh, I've got all the tools to do that with it. Uh, and then of course we have the grease in here for our hitch as well. So all that maintenance I can do on the, on the road. The thing we're doing different for Alaska that I haven't done before is I've done some research and have purchased some tire repair kits. Now our tires on our truck, we literally just replaced them just a couple hundred miles ago. Uh, so they're brand new tires for the trip. Uh, which I'm not sponsored in any way, but I have Falcon Wild Peak. Uh, the old tires were AT3Ws. Uh, these are AT4Ws. They don't make the 3Ws anymore. But the AT3Ws were great tires. Even though they had a warranty of 55,000 miles on it, we got 75,000 miles on those tires before we replaced them. But it was just due for replacement, so we did go with new tires. On top of the new tires, I've got three different repair kits. One of the kits I found was emergency valve stems. Uh, if for some reason a valve stem gets ripped out, uh, I don't even know how that would happen, but if it did, these emergency valve stems you can actually push in and then they have a wing nut to tighten down and uh, it'll get you to the repair shop. It, it's not a permanent fix, but it will get you to the repair shop. So we have two of those. Uh, and then this one's a little different. I found this on some off-roader uh, YouTube videos. Uh, it is a sidewall patch. If for some reason the sidewall gets ripped, uh, this is used off-road to get you to the, the repair shop to get it replaced. Uh, but it's still, you know, if for some reason we had a bad flat on our, on our truck, put the spare on, and then we got a bad flat on that, so we had no backup, we could attempt to use this to repair the sidewall damage. Uh, in some videos I've watched of off-roaders using this kit, they've actually taken a knife, punctured the sidewall of the tire, then repaired it with this, and were able to drive and this off-roading over rocks, uh, over different obstacles. They were able to do it without it failing. So uh, I figured that's just a good backup to have. I'm hoping to not have to use it. And the other one is a full, uh, tire repair kit that uh, has all of the, the threads to stick in like a, if you drive over a screw or a nail it's got all of the reamers uh, and all the repair items needed to fix that plus it has uh, valve for your valve stems uh, on your tires extra valve caps uh, the tool to replace those and it comes with everything needed to do a repair to the tread of your tire if you get a puncture. Uh, so between those kits uh, I feel like we've got a pretty good uh, gamut of repair items so that if we have that type of problem and we're in a remote area we should be able to with these tools get our tire inflated and up and running. On top of that we do carry a uh, air compressor in the truck. I carry it all the time. Um, it's something I keep in the truck itself. I have a shovel, an axe, uh, a, a jack that uh, it also has a built-in um, jack stand and uh, the air compressor. Uh, I went with a Smitty built, not a Vier. Love my Smitty built. It's worked really great. And then we'll have that on the trip as well. So that's some of the other things we've done to prep for the trip. Figured since I was talking about them, I should probably pull them out and show them to you. So the jack that I was talking about is this right here. 
It's got a built-in jack stand, but it's just a standard bottle jack. Uh, this one is rated to three tons. I've used this once before, it works really well. One of the things I do like is how big the base is, because uh, that way, if you're on soft soil, gravel, loose gravel, or what have you, it's got enough area that it can actually hold things well enough. The other thing I like about this is you can adjust this piece here to different heights before you even start jacking. So if you're like your RV axles or whatever you're jacking is too high, uh, you can adjust this before you even start jacking. So it's got a lot of versatility to it. Uh, and that big base is also a good benefit. And then this is the air compressor I opted for. It's a Smitty built. Um, when I was doing my research, I saw a lot of RVers seem to really, really like the Viair. I've never used a Viair, so I cannot say anything negative or positive about the Viair other than what I saw on my research. And the differences I saw were the Smitty built. Uh, if you look at the actual application of each air compressor, there's certain limits to how long you're supposed to allow that air compressor to run within an hour so that it doesn't overheat per the manufacturer's information on the website could not run as much per hour that, than the Smitty Built. The other thing about the Smitty Built is it produced more cubic feet per minute than the Viair. And to top all that off, the Smitty Built was a little bit cheaper. So I went with uh, air compressor for cost value, but I have found this thing to work really well. I've been out on the sand in the beach where I deflated the tires on the truck and the trailer. And when we were done coming off, I filled all eight tires in less than half an hour with this air pump. So it works really, really well. The other thing we have for Alaska is a lot of people talk about the bugs. I have a gazelle tent screen room uh, for you to, to use when the bugs are out. We've used our gazelle before on our big trip around the country back in 2021. It's super easy to set up. All the poles are already installed. All you have to do is push in the center of each panel to set it up or take it down. It's really, really super simple to set up. It's very effective. Uh, there's a couple of places that pretty much you could not eat outside uh, when we were on that big trip, especially down south. Uh, there's a lot of bugs down there too. And we found that if you wanted to eat outside in comfort, you had to set up the gazelle tent. So that's something we're taking up to Alaska with us. So that covers the basics of what we've done to prep for the trip. Uh, there's other things we've done as well, but these are the bigger uh, things that we've kind of changed up for this trip specific. Uh, this Jack's new, um, the tire repair kit's new, um, the solar panel's new. So just some of the things we've added to our, our equipment to hopefully make Alaska a really, really fun experience. Uh, we're looking forward to taking you all along and uh, hope you guys enjoy our adventure. Thanks for watching.